It was 60 years ago. That was when Godzilla first appeared. A 50 meter tall kaiju that laid ruin to a city center. Godzilla may not have been fast on his feet, but the threat he posed to mankind was undeniable. We know that Godzilla's claws and his powerful tail constitute his primary means of attack. We also have it on record that he used his oversized upper body to charge at his target. He also lets loose atomic breath, a blast attack from his mouth which can turn a town into a sea of fire in seconds. <laughs> Grabbing hold of things is also well within his capability. This is all the biological data we currently have on record. But we know very little about how or why he possesses such unimaginable powers. At the time, Godzilla returned to the sea at the dear cost of Professor Sarazawa's life. So many paid the ultimate sacrifice back then. But humanity gained two valuable things as a result. The first is G-Energy. As a result of our studies, we discovered the very essence of Godzilla's life force and turned it into a powerful fuel for humanity. Now, without G-Energy, our civilization would fall apart within a very short span of time.
We're picking up a strong signal. It's heading to the surface. Is this Godzilla? We cannot determine whether it is the same Godzilla as in our records. What does Godzilla want? Oh no, not the generator. It must be the G-Energy generator. It's the only explanation as to why he chose to come ashore in this area. We discovered G-Energy because of him, but it turns out the stuff is his favorite meal. to the video feed at the data collection point. The data collection squad is requesting orders. Godzilla. Generators power levels have hit zero. 